Yeah. Like you go. Yeah. Um, Richard, we'll ask you to to just sort of run us through some of the uh, the concertinas you've got there. Right. If you wouldn't mind. Well, here we go now. <clears throat> This particular one here is the uh, the very sort that was played by the uh, the good players on the gold fields and out uh, for the bush dancers. 20 keys, C and G, uh, made in England by Lackadal. Uh, it's a cheap instrument uh, by their standards, but still high quality with a nice sound. This particular one is tuned uh, in a different. Uh, tuning to the standard, it's, it's, uh, it's in a tempered tuning system, so it sounds slightly different, the chords are a bit different. It's a C chord. Okay. Now, uh, a little tune to give you an idea, simple tune. Um, you can play, it's, it's very easy to play simple harmonies and some octaves on these, but uh, just a basic tune, which is a very popular one around the bush, I should imagine, something like... spicing up, using the notes that fall naturally uh, to hand and using both hands at once. traditional bush tune on the traditional bush concertina. 20 key. Uh, C and G, that's all you get. You can cross the rows, you can play, uh, the other sort of music is uh, Morris music, um, which it lends itself to. Uh, something like, uh, oh, we'll do uh, Country Gardens, where you use both the rows and use the harmony as well to get maximum volume of sound for um, dancers again. It's a, it's a dance instrument, really. Bouncy rhythms, polkas, Waltzes, the ideal instrument. From the from this instrument, developed the 30 key instrument. Here's a kookaburra, 30 key concertina. That's yeah. yours, isn't it? That's, that's, that's right. the one, one that you make. That, the very first one I ever made. Uh, it has an extra row of buttons on the top, which make it chromatic, so you can play in different keys. Um, it's not. Uh, not an instrument that I, I play very much in that uh, manner, but um, it has a different, if, if I just play a few uh, chords, it, it's a different sound to the other one. This has, um, well, it's, it's a more modern design uh, and it has uh, a more sort of a shrill sound to it now. <laughs> using it much the same as the other one, but it is possible to play um, in uh, any key over two and a half octave range. Once you get into more difficult keys though, you lose the ability to do all that accompaniment. So it's restricted in that respect. Great for a single note Irish music. Um, so that was the Anglo... 
First of all, the the uh, the Anglo, the, the 20 key Anglo, basically the same pattern as the German concertina, but made in England. Then the Anglo chromatic okay. uh, concertina, which uh, a bit more. That's it. Anglo chromatic concertina, which um, has the extra row on the top here to give you uh, all those sharps and flats that you so much desire. Uh, this one here is another Anglo concertina, uh, an unusual one in that uh, it's a baritone. So it's a whole octave down on the other two. And so it sounds. Now we stray on to the, uh, the first of the concertinas made by Wheatstone, the English system concertina, which has little dinky thumb straps instead of a hand strap. Uh, these are adjusted for someone with smaller thumbs than myself. Uh, and on this instrument, the notes uh, alternate. So the first, the C is on this side, the D is on this side, B, F, Uh, all the notes on this side are on, on in the music are on the lines and all the notes on this side are in the spaces. That applies to uh, the sharps and flats as well. It's very fast because you just walk your fingers up and down. Chords, close chords are easy, um, but accompaniment of lower chords against higher melody is quite difficult to do. But uh, for actual speed of, of, and precision of playing, especially melody and cl close harmony, that's really the best instrument. It'll play in any key. So that's probably, uh, well, that's the first and, and certainly the most logical instrument. Fully chromatic. Fully chromatic. Yeah. This instrument is also fully chromatic. This is the duet concertina. And this differs from the English in that all the notes on this side are, are, are on the bass end are, and on, on this side you've got your treble note. So you can actually play, uh, if you want to play it like a piano accordion, uh, which I've been accused of doing a lot, you can play your melody on the right hand side and your chords on the left hand side. And so you get, uh, it's great for polkas and things. This instrument more than anything and I play it to music so I've got a guide while I'm playing it. Uh, it, will, it will also play four-part hymns and so on. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not as fast as the English uh, to play but uh, it, it will play anything more or less you can play on, on, a, on, a, on an organ and it also has an octave overlap so that you've, you can play this, this octave here on the left and you can play it on the right. To complicate matters with this particular type of system, that octave has different fingering on either end when you're playing it. <laughs> it's, it's the first of the, of the duets really and, and uh, 
it has a few glitches. Which system is it, Richard? Or the oh, this is the McCann, McCann system. Yes, yeah, this is the McCann system. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's. I prefer this system because I can play almost any normal. So that's uh, one, two, three different, three and a half different sorts. Mm. That's it. Run right out. Thank you very much. What about your big beastie there that you... Uh, oh, the one I showed you? Yes, please. Yes. Well, it's the same as it's this one. It's the same one. as that one, yes. Yeah, I can show you what. Yes, uh, this particular instrument uh, is the, uh, the epitome of the concertinas, really. This is the, uh, the 81 key McCann duet. It was originally designed um, uh, for one particular player, Alexander Prince, who needed the number of keys that it has, and there are 81 buttons on this, this giant of a thing, and, and it was originally designed to play the, uh, the complete overture from Tannhäuser to the original written music. And that's why he had it made, and after he played it all around the country, people ordered them. And as you can see, it's a big instrument, it cost a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money, and hardly anyone that ever bought one learnt to play it, because it is fairly difficult to play. And your story of that one is interesting too, that it's the fact that it had hardly been, if ever, yes, played. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah, when I bought it. It was made in 1923, and uh, when I bought it about you know, 15 years ago, I guess, uh, it had never been played, really. And that's... Not only this one, but uh, I know of a number of duets in that same boat. People played the English concertina, and they heard uh, Prince playing, and they thought, oh, if only I had a duet, I could play just like Prince. They bought the duet, struggled with it for a few weeks, put it back in the box, and that was it. <laughs> the, uh, there's, the bottom, there's the bottom note. It has the same range as a cello, which is uh, why I have to play it in the orchestra because they can't get a cello player so I have to be the cello in the community orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me know when. No, you just gave your life. Uh, the duet plays waltzes really well because you can put the, uh, the chords bumpity bump in on the, on the left hand side.
few waltzes. Mm -hmm. um, here's an interesting bit of music. On the duet. This is a this is the sort of thing you'd play on an English, really. What? How many keys in that one? Uh, Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a cornet solo. Uh, um, written to be accompanied by the piano, so I can play the lead in bit. Um, not the sort of thing you hear anybody play on a concertina, as far as I know, but since I play the cornet, I like to play this sort of stuff. It's good practice for me. <laughs> 